Darkness. How did they not see the darkness that lies in men's hearts? Was this the curse of Mitzgar Sormer who took away the blessing of light? And if so, why did the echo still not help us? Help to show us what has been going on while we work and try to protect the realm. Betrayed and broken, the warrior light finds an ally that has long been cut off from the world. But what of the other scions? And will the warrior of light be able to restore their name and prove their innocence in the wake of Nanamo's death? The lands of Ishgard are cold and unwelcoming. It's a fitting refuge for the trials that lie ahead in the story of Heaven's Word. Hello and welcome to the story so far for Final Fantasy XIV. My name is Brian and in this series we hope to highlight and summarize the story so far, from the prehistory of Eorzea all the way to the latest chapter of Stormblood leading us into Shadowbringers. If you don't want any of the story ruined, I recommend you bookmark this story and video for later. This series hopes to highlight and tell the story, not necessarily in chronological order, of the history of Eorzea, the Warrior of Light, the Science of Seventh Dawn, the Crystal Tower, and so on. So consider this your spoiler warning. Now, Heaven's Word is a story about a promise extended. Something that, by all accounts, much like the story of the Dragonsong War, is a story of redemption. If a realm reborn was the apology, Heaven's Word is the amends made. It's a story of love and fear and betrayal and the danger of chasing power. In some ways, it's a very human story filled with dragons, and as such, as an editor's note, there might be a few that I just don't say correctly, so please bear with me. Now, let's begin. Heaven's Word. The Warrior of Light enters Ishgard and inserts themselves right into the Dragonsong War, a war that has raged for over a thousand years, and thankfully, he is not alone. Alphano, still reeling from his failure with the Crystal Braves, is joined by Tataru. As they seek asylum and are granted it, ushered into the manor of Count Forteps, they are quickly set to action to aid the Count in hopes to bring about an end to the ceaseless war. However, not all have welcomed the outsiders, as the Scions are quickly accused of heresy by the Archbishop's honor guard, the Heaven's Ward. The Warrior of Light proves their innocence in a trial by combat, which also ends up granting them an audience with the Archbishop Thornton VII, who apologizes for his subordinates, lapse, and judgment. In the private meeting, Thornton reveals that he has actually accepted the Assians' offer of power to continue the war effort, as well as his intention to betray them once he learns their secrets. Meanwhile, through the work of the Admiral, the Dome and Spy Network alerts the Warrior Light that Roban has about to be executed. Mounting a successful rescue mission, there comes an ally from the most unexpected of places. Seeing a rapidly remobilizing Garlean army, Lord Lolorito confesses that he came to the knowledge of Teleji Adeleji's plot and switched out the poison for a sleeping potion for Nanamo, thus actually saving her life. He then personally delivers the antidote to Roban and pledges full support for the Sultana. And while this is great news, unfortunately, the Dravanians prepare to resume their siege of Ishgard. Alphano suggests that they entreat Lady Iceheart to help broker the peace with Nidhogg through negotiation. Estinian offers his lands to aid in this endeavor, promising to slay the Great Worm if words come to blows. Iceheart reveals that she too possesses the power of the Echo and used it to glimpse at the truth behind the war. Born Yazel, she took the name Iceheart after communing with the soul of Shiva. The mortal woman whose love for the great worm, Herresvega, allowed man and dragon to coexist peaceably for 200 years. Yet the Elzin grew envious of the dragon's power and conspired to steal Nidhogg's eye, the source of his strength. This, she claims, is the origin of the Dragonsong War. Aiming to avoid further bloodshed, Yazel agrees to take the party to parlay with Herresvega for his aid in ending the war. At their meeting, she invokes the name of Horaceberger's beloved Shiva, but he rebukes her, calling the primal a mockery of Shiva's memory. Here, the great dragon recounts the true origins of the war, which date all the way back to time immemorial. When the dragon king, Mitzgar Sormer, first arrived on the planet with seven eggs that would become his first brood. Of his children, Horaceberger, Rattagaskar, and Nidhogg settled in Eorzea. The first Elzin, to settle in Eorzea encountered these great worms, and Nidhogg was initially mistrustful, having seen the grim fate of his brother Bahamut at the hands of the Algian Empire in eras past. However, the love between Shiva and Horaceberger brokered a peace between the people. 
To overcome the brevity of her mortal life, Shiva allowed Horace Vagar to devour her soul so they could be together for eternity. However, with Asian urging, King Thordon betrayed the dragon's trust, conspiring with his knights to slay Radagaskar and devour her eyes to gain unimaginable power. This becomes Nidhogg's true motivation for the assault on Ishgard. His undying wish for revenge upon Thordon's descendants, Horace Felger ultimately refuses to abet peace, judging Nidhogg's cause as just. Astinian then concludes that the words have failed, and the only deed that will end the war is Nidhogg's death. Using the power of Nidhogg's eye, Astinian weakens him enough to prize out the remaining eye, vanquishing the Great Worm. With the war over, the Warrior of Light and company return to Ishgard to share their revelation about the true history of Ishgard's founding. In confronting the Archbishop, Thordon VII reveals his role in perpetrating the Dragon Song deception, as well as his plan to travel to Asla to gain ultimate power. Now, Asla is an ancient Algian floating colony that serves as a prison for the Warring Triad, a trio of the third astral era primals with limitless strength. By absorbing the Worrying Triad, Thordon aims to deify himself into a primal being using the prayers of Ishgard's people and gaining the power to wage everlasting war. So then as the Warrior Light travels to Asla, the Garlean airship fleet approaches, taking advantage of the chaotic Ishgardian conflict to plunder Algian technology. The flagship Graditon opens fire on the Warrior of Light ship, but Horace Felger approaches with Yazel in tow, both having a change of heart since the death of Nidha. Yazel summons Shiva and provides enough cover to land on the floating continent, but she is unfortunately killed by the Garlean's overwhelming firepower in the process. Now traveling deep within the Aetheral Chemical Research Facility, the Warrior of Light confronts Igorum and Lahabrea, the architects of Thordon's scheme. Then the Warrior of Light erases Gormorum's essence with the Heidelin's Blessing of Light, and Thordon VII himself arrives to vanquish Lahabrea. He then absorbs the power of Nidhogg's eye, transferring him into King Thordon, a primal powered by a thousand years of Ishgardian prayer. Making quick work of Lahabrea, he turns to sup on the Warring Triad but the Warrior of Light manages to strike him and his defiled knights down. As the conflict finally draws to a close, Astinian offers to seal away Nidhogg's eyes so that their power could no longer be used for evil. However, Nidhogg's rage proves too great and his eyes overwhelm Astinian's psyche, possessing him and transfiguring his body into that of the Great Worm, allowing Nidhogg's shade to escape to rally his horde anew. Returning to Ishgard, the Warrior of Light receives a hero's welcome as Amric pledges to reconcile Ishgard's true past with peace promised by the present. As Thordon's illegitimate son, he assumes temporary rule of Ishgard, and under this uneasy accord, Ishgard rejoins the Eorzean Alliance. Though open warfare had been abated, the revelation of Ishgard's bloody origin splinters the citizens into populist factions supporting Emmerich and the denialists supporting the former clergy who stand to lose their religious influence. Eager to then prove man and dragon can coexist peacefully, Emmerich moves to broach diplomatic relations with Dravania, proposing a meeting with Horacefeger's daughter, Vidimir. In the course of their search for the other missing comrades, the Scions come into conflict with the other band of adventurers who identify themselves as the Warriors of Darkness. The party then returns to Ishgard in riot and investigators demand a conclave to elect a new archbishop. The Warrior of Light aids the Temple Knights in a raid of the insurgent stronghold, climaxing when their ringleader tosses a hostage child off the battlements. By providence, Vinimir arrives to catch her in mid-air, having agreed to this act as Dravanian's ambassador, which plants the seeds of hope for peace in the minds of Hanluk. The Scions then focus their efforts on locating their missing leader, Menphilia. Crossing into the Ethereal Sea, they discover that Menphilia has become an avatar of the Mother Crystal Hydaelyn, and it is revealed that the existence of 13 reflections of the planet remnants with her battle with the dark deity, Zodiac. The Asians succeed in shattering seven, each furthering Zodiac's revival and sapping Hydaelyn of strength, which necessitated Menphilia's permanent symbiosis. 
Now in Ishgard, Emric works towards a conference to announce his intentions to end the Dragonsong War, not with violence, but peace. The conference is temporarily delayed when protesters urge the crowd not to forget their desire for vengeance. Sensing fading Ishgardian unity, Emric organizes a set of joint military exercises with the Eorzean Alliance to reunite national pride. And with the conference back on track, Vidimir arrives and accepts the Ishgardian's proposal for peace. However, Nidhogg crashes the event with a dire warning that his next assault will be the last and promising Ishgard's total annihilation. The Scions race against time to find aid against Nidhogg, asking his brood brother Horace Felger for assistance. After enduring his trials, the Great Worm joins Ishgard in the final battle. The Warrior of Light uses Horace Felger's eye and the full power of Hydaelyn's blessing to slay the worm-shaped shade. The adventurer and Alphano manage to pry the accursed eyes from Istenian's armor and release him from his possession. The Horde retreats in disarray, signaling a true end of the war, and Istinian then recovers from his coma and relinquishes his title as the Azure Dragoon, quietly escaping into the city to live his post-vengeance life. As his final act as Lord Commander, Emmerich establishes a parliamentary democracy in Ishgard ruled by both lowborn and highborn citizens, represented by the House of Commons and the House of Lords. Through eager to leave the public service, he is quickly elected as chairman of the latter to his chagrin, and Count Edmond concludes his narration by penning the last words of his memoir, Heaven's Word. And then there is always the dream of peace, yet the warrior light and Emmerich's long-delayed dinner date was interrupted by news that Alice, Alphanote's twin sister, has arrived injured at the House Four Temps. She was surprised attacked by the Warriors of Darkness, having overheard their plot to trigger an arms race of primal summoning. The Warriors of Darkness reveal that their cooperation with the Asians aims to bring about Hydaelyn to the point of destruction to restore their own home world. Tracking down yet another lead among Alamegan refugees, the Warrior of Light is then reunited with Ida and Papalimo, who had joined the resistance efforts against the Garlean Empire. A man known as the Griffin has captivated the ears and hearts of the refugees, inspiring them to flock to his call to arms. He promises the party to an impending summoning of Ifrit, which turns out to be a trap. During the battle, one of the Warriors of Darkness reveals himself as the Scion Oriange, who has been playing a double agent. He invokes a ritual to gain an audience with Hydaelyn's avatar Minfilia. At Oriange's suggestion, she accompanies the Warriors of Darkness to their home world to return the excess light that threatens to erase it to the Mother Crystal. The Scions then learned the Griffin's plan to capture Balsell's Wall, a Garlean base dividing the Black Shroud and the occupied Alaminga. By disguising as Eorzean Alliance soldiers, the Griffin's resistance faction aims to provoke a Garlean counterattack, which would force the Alliance into a full-out war. However, unfortunately, the Griffin has a more sinister plot. He slays his comrades and employs their prayers and ether to summon a massive primal. His mad ritual is complete when he sacrifices himself to the power, the primal's vengeful will, to utterly destroy the empire. Papalimo calls on an ancient sealing ritual, knowing it would cost his own life. His gambit buys time for the Alliance to mount a response to the uncontrollable calamity level threat. Yet with little to no options, they accept help from a really surprising source. Nero Tolskeva, the dishonored Garlean scientist, crashes the Alliance meeting with his solution, an Algian primal hunting weapon known as Omega. When the dragon-like primal Shinryu escapes Papalimo seal, Omega engages it and they seemingly eliminate each other with their final attacks. With the seal gone, Papalimo's last remaining spell also fades. An enchanted tattoo used to disguise the scion known as Ida. She removes her mask and explains that she has actually Ida's sister, Lise. Her ruse was to preserve the memory of her sister who had died fighting in the resistance. Lise renews her resolve to fight for Alamegan independence, now under her true name. And with Balthazar's wall actually captured by the Alliance, the Scions prepare for the Empire's inevitable response. And with that, war is on the doorsteps of the world once more. And the Garlean Empire is ready to make a swift response. 
the warrior light must make haste to take on a new threat in Xenos, the Viceroy of Almingo, who has actually been enhanced with an artificial version of the Echo. But we'll dive more into that in our next video. A, I just want to say thank you so much for watching this video. This has been Brian from work to game Hope you liked it. Hope you hit that thumbs up button. Hope you share this with your friends. If you, again, like within all these videos, if there's any specific character or things that you want to have us dive into more later down the road, please let us know. Hit us up. Also, thanks for all the people who've contributed to this over at the Wikipedia. Again, the link will be in the description below. Uh, this is a script, both of my own words, as well as the Wikipedia words as well, just to help make sure that this is coherent and that I don't end up skipping over any important beats. So thanks to those who have contributed to the wiki. Thanks to those over at Gamerscape. And thanks to you for watching this video once more. Like I said, my name is Brian. And I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Hey guys, it's me, Brian. Uh, thanks so much for watching this video. If you're new here, we hope you hit that subscribe button. Check us out. We talk a lot about video games and we hope to at least hear from you in the comments below. We also try to respond to our comments. You know, we really appreciate the comments, the discussion, all the various points of view that everybody is so kindly, uh, I, I guess, and politely or impolitely shares with us from time to time. So anyway, guys, again, uh, thanks for watching this video. We hope you hit that like button. We hope you hit that subscribe button. Come back for more content each and every day. Uh, we post a lot around here and we'd love to hear from you about what you like about video games and everything. And uh, especially if you have any questions that you're stuck on in anything. So anyway, signing off. <laughs> See you next time.